Neil deGrasse Tyson's comments about Pluto have reignited widespread fascination with this icy world that sits on the edge of our solar system. Though officially reclassified as a dwarf planet in 2006, Pluto has never slipped from the public imagination. If anything, the debates surrounding its status and the scientific revelations of recent years have only amplified its allure. What was once seen as a cold, inert rock concealed within the Cooper Belt beyond Neptune has instead emerged as a surprisingly dynamic body, rich with geological complexity and full of mysteries that challenge our assumptions about how planets form, how they evolve, and what conditions might allow life to take hold. Pluto is no longer just an astronomical curiosity, it has grown into a case study in how science itself evolves when confronted with new evidence. Much of this transformation in our understanding stems from NASA's New Horizons mission, which performed its historic flyby in July 2015. For decades, Pluto had been little more than a hazy speck, even in our most powerful telescopes a symbol of mystery at the far edge of the solar system. Then, in a matter of hours, New Horizons swept past and sent back images that forever altered our perspective. What it revealed was breathtaking. I see planes stretching for hundreds of miles, mountains as tall as the Rockies, and an iconic heart-shaped basin named Sputnik Planitia that seemed to capture the world's imagination as much as it captured sunlight across Pluto's frozen face. The long-standing assumption that Pluto was nothing more than a frozen relic geologically dead and unchanging was overturned by these features. Instead, the spacecraft showed us a landscape scarred by fractures, smoothed by resurfacing, and dotted with features that hinted at recent or even ongoing activity. The relative lack of craters in certain regions suggested that parts of Pluto's surface have changed in geologically recent times, forcing researchers to reevaluate the dwarf planet as a potentially active world. One of the most intriguing implications of this evidence is the possibility that a vast ocean exists beneath Pluto's icy outer layer. Despite surface temperatures plunging to around minus 375 degrees Fahrenheit minus to 125 degrees Celsius, models suggest that internal heat from radioactive decay, together with gravitational interactions from its large moon Charon, could keep water and liquid form deep underground. This idea is not merely speculative. Several lines of evidence point toward its plausibility. The orientation of Sputnik Planitia, nearly opposite Charon, suggests a process called true polar wander, in which Pluto's outer shell may have reoriented itself relative to its interior. Such a reorientation would be far easier to explain if a liquid ocean existed beneath the surface, allowing the crust to float and shift over a softer interior. In fact, computer models demonstrate that only a small percentage of scenarios replicate Pluto's alignment without assuming the presence of such an ocean, making the case increasingly compelling. Further evidence comes from Pluto's chaotic terrain on its far side, where cracked and distorted landscapes resemble impact-broken features seen on other worlds. For instance, on Europa, Mars, and Mercury, seismic waves generated by impacts have concentrated on the opposite hemisphere, causing disarray and disruption. Similar processes seem to have unfolded on Pluto, and models developed by researchers like Alan Stern and others suggest that only a world with a liquid subsurface layer would allow seismic energy to propagate in the necessary way. Pluto is therefore not merely a frozen ball of ice and rock, but a layered body potentially containing one of the most significant ingredients for life, liquid water. The story becomes even more compelling when Pluto's icy volcanoes enter the picture. Unlike Earth's fiery eruptions, Pluto's cryovolcanoes would release slurries of water, ammonia, and methane. These substances, carried upward from the interior, could act as vehicles for both energy and nutrients, cycling materials between the depths and the surface. New Horizons identified two especially large candidates, informally named Reitmans and Picardmans, both showing surprisingly few impact craters indicating that they formed relatively recently on geological time scales. 
Their very existence demonstrates that Pluto's interior retains sufficient heat to drive eruptions that could last billions of years after the solar system's formation. The potential consequences for habitability are profound. Cryovolcanism may transport organics to subsurface oceans, sustain chemical gradients, and create niches where microbial life might conceivably survive. Adding to the complexity is Pluto's thin but dynamic atmosphere, composed mostly of nitrogen with traces of carbon monoxide and methane. This fragile blanket undergoes dramatic seasonal changes as Pluto traces its 248-year orbit around the Sun. When Pluto moves closer, surface ices sublimate and thicken the atmosphere. When it recedes, gases freeze out and the atmosphere collapses. These cycles create weather-like patterns and interact with surface features in ways that remain only partly understood. Even more fascinating are the hazes New Horizons detected, extending over 200 kilometers above the surface. These layers are composed of hydrocarbon particles formed when ultraviolet sunlight breaks apart methane molecules, leading to the creation of complex organic compounds. The result is a delicate blue haze that gives Pluto's skies a surprisingly Earth-like tint in certain images, even as it contributes to the dwarf planet's reddish hue caused by organic deposits called tholins, which fall to the ground below. Tholins are particularly significant because they represent molecules that could serve as precursors to the chemistry of life. Similar compounds have been found on other promising worlds such as Titan, Europa, and Enceladus, raising the possibility that the processes shaping Pluto may also be part of a broader pattern across the outer solar system. On Earth, organics like these are a cornerstone of biology, and their presence on Pluto hints that even in such an extreme environment, the building blocks of life may exist. Earth's extremophiles microorganisms thriving in boiling vents, acidic pools, subglacial lakes, or dark ocean trenches show us that life can endure in conditions once considered inhospitable. If Pluto's interior provides a liquid reservoir enriched with organics and shielded from radiation by a thick icy crust, then the possibility of life, however primitive, cannot be dismissed. It is not unheard of that straightforward microbial forms of life could persist there. The connection between Pluto and its largest moon, Charon, only deepens the intrigue. Charon's size is unusual compared to Pluto, with a diameter more than half that of its parent body. As a result, the two form what is often described as an orbiting binary system, with a common center of mass that lies outside Pluto itself. They are locked neatly, forever showing the same face to one another, and their gravitational interactions may help maintain heating by stretching Pluto's interior. Charon itself displays a history of geologic activity characterized by vast canyons, smooth plains, and evidence of resurfacing by cryovolcanism. Together, Pluto and Charon form a dynamic system that challenges neat categorizations and expands our understanding of how icy worlds evolve. Pluto's significance, however, extends beyond geology and habitability. It is one of the largest known Cooper Belt objects, and as such, it offers a rare window into the earliest history of the solar system. The Cooper Belt, a vast reservoir of icy remnants, preserves materials from the solar nebula that formed the planets. By investigating Pluto, scientists can learn how these bodies formed, how giant planets migrated outward, and how volatiles like water and organics may have been delivered to the inner solar system. In this regard, Pluto functions as a time capsule, a frozen remnant of the processes that not only shaped Earth but also itself and its neighbors. New Horizons revolutionized our understanding, but it also left countless questions unanswered. Its rapid flyby captured only one hemisphere in detail, leaving the far side imaged at lower resolution. Yet more surprises were suggested by the data. However, for a true global picture, an additional mission is needed, probably an orbiter capable of studying Pluto over months or years. Such a mission could map the entire surface, monitor atmospheric cycles, measure the flow of heat inside, and perhaps use radar to probe beneath the crust for signs of that elusive ocean. 
The technological challenges are immense, extreme cold, vast distance, communication delays of nearly 10 hours, and the need for extraordinary reliability over decades. Still, the rewards might change things not just for Pluto, but for planetary science as a whole. Ironically, Pluto's changing status to a dwarf planet may have enhanced its cultural and scientific importance. While many mourned the loss of the ninth planet in 2006, the debate forced astronomers to refine definitions and reconsider what it means to be a planet. It opened the door to appreciating Pluto for what it is rather than what we expected it to be. Far from consigning it to obscurity, the reclassification cemented Pluto as a representation of scientific modesty and curiosity. It represents the evolving nature of knowledge, the willingness to update ideas in the face of new evidence, and the reminder that the universe is more diverse than our categories sometimes allow. The broader significance of Pluto's tale is the exploration itself. Before New Horizons, our comprehension of the world was largely based on presumptions and blurry images. In a single flyby, those assumptions were overturned, replaced with a vivid portrait of a dynamic, evolving body. That transformation underscores the power of direct observation, a principle that extends not just to Pluto, but to every other icy body that awaits study in the Cooper Belt and beyond. These objects are not just cold leftovers. They're active laboratories holding clues to planetary migration, the delivery of volatiles, and the persistence of geological activity over billions of years. Pluto's saga also emphasizes the patience and ambition required in space exploration. New Horizons had to travel more than 3 billion miles, with the help of gravity and years of careful planning, to reach its target. Scientists waited decades for the moment of greatest proximity, and in the span of a few hours, the spacecraft collected data that will be analyzed for generations. It serves as a reminder that the most profound discoveries require persistence, humility, and long-term vision. In this instantaneous age of fulfillment, Pluto teaches us that the universe often rewards patience with revelations that far surpass expectations. As we look toward the future, Pluto stands out as both a scientific priority and a cultural icon. Its icy mountains, vast nitrogen plains, reddish organic stains, and possible secret oceans invite deeper exploration. Its relationship with Karen and its role as a preserved relic of the ancient solar system guarantee its place as a natural laboratory. But Pluto inspires us beyond science in a more human way. It embodies the spirit of curiosity, the willingness to ask difficult questions, and the capacity to be surprised by what we find. In its cold and distant orbit, Pluto reminds us that the cosmos is not static, but alive with change and diversity, and that any light in the sky may conceal wonders waiting to reshape our understanding of the universe. In the end, Pluto is more than a dwarf planet, more than a former member of the solar system's official nine. It is a testament to research, to scientific humility, and to the endless complexity of the cosmos. Whether it harbors a subsurface ocean, whether microbial life has ever found refuge beneath its icy crust, or whether its mysteries remain beyond our reach for centuries to come, Pluto continues to challenge our definitions and expand our horizons. Its story is not just about a world at the edge of the sun's domain, but about our own relentless drive to explore, to discover, and to seek our place in a universe that grows more astonishing the deeper we examine. Astronomers are still finding distant exoplanets orbiting stars, and Pluto serves as a reminder that even small icy bodies can be worlds of staggering complexity. Many exoplanets may resemble Pluto more than Earth, existing as frozen spheres far from their suns. By studying Pluto, we obtain interpretive templates for those distant worlds, teaching us that habitability may not require Earth-like conditions, but could arise from hidden oceans shielded beneath ice and sustained by internal heat. In this way, Pluto evolves into more than just an object of local interest. It becomes a bridge between our solar system and countless others. Its shifting skies, icy mountains, and possible oceans echo the idea that life might find a foothold in places we once dismissed as barren. 
For scientists, this is not only a source of knowledge but also inspiration, a reminder that the universe is richer than imagination alone could ever predict.